In this video, we'll take a look at a math operator here. And what we're gonna do is there are different types of math operators in After Effects, and they all have to do with like things like sine and cosine. And these are things that are also involved in science. So for example, the sine wave, if you think of a sine wave, it's an oscillation between one value and another value, and it kind of has this waveform. If you think about audio signals, audio signals have a waveform. So when we're talking about sine and cosine, uh, it's just different directions of that waveform. So in After Effects, if we open up an expression using uh, any of these math properties, uh, we can see some different things happen. So there's math.pi, which is, you know, the 3.14. There's math.random, there's math.sine, there's math.cosine. So we're gonna take a look at what we can do uh, with some of these math um, properties here. And some of these scripts are gonna be really complicated and, well, not too complicated, but they're gonna involve a lot of typing and things like that. So I have a Google spreadsheet, I mean a Google uh, doc that you can use um, as a reference for this. So for the first thing we're going to take a look at is math.sign. So I'm going to open up a rotation property here for this object. And I'm going to hold down option, click on the stopwatch here to open up an expression. And what we're going to do is just type in math. And here's, you can see um, after I typed in math there, there was a bunch of different things that happened after that. So sign is one thing and you can see sign there's all these different options available to us here, sign, integer, stuff like that. And then open parentheses, close parentheses. And that doesn't, that's not gonna do anything for us because it needs a value, All right? So we need a value here. So we can put in an actual value, you know, if I put in a value like 120 or something like that. So now it has a value and what's that gonna do? So it's not really gonna do anything because we need the value to change over time. And time is actually the value that we really want in here. So I need time and that time is gonna change and you're not gonna to see too much happen in the animation just yet. But if we were to multiply this by, let's say if I multiply this by 100, now we should start seeing something, just zoom in a little bit here. So if I go back in the playhead and start playing this, you can see that it rotates to the right and then it comes back. So that's the oscillation that I was talking about. So that's following a waveform, a wave pattern. It's going from 100 to negative 100 and it's just gonna keep doing that over time. And that's that's the, what the time property is doing for us. This times 100, we could uh, put that into a variable value or we could use uh, something else like math.random. Right, so it'd be uh, a random value. And we're not gonna see too much happen there. You can see some kind of oscillation. So when random is producing a number between zero and one, and it's producing it in a small amount, but if we multiply that by 50, let's say, let's see what we get there. So you see some kind of, and it's kind of like jerky because it's just producing this random number repetitively. So it's kind of just rotating to that random number. So um, the other thing we can do is, I'm gonna just take this off and let's say, Multiply this by math dot math dot pi. Right, this is should give us a small amount of rotation because remember that math dot pi is three point one four something. But if we take this and we multiply that by a value of let's say twenty, Right, let me take a look at this. Now you're gonna see this spinning kind of effect and it rotates back. And that's the oscillations that I was talking about. 
and it's doing it here too. Now, instead of sine, we can use cosine, and the only difference here is the direction, right? So if I type in COS, that's cosine, and it's I believe it's the opposite of sine, so what's going to happen here is it's going to rotate in the reverse direction first, and then it's going to rotate in the other direction. But it's still going to oscillate, it's just going to move in a different way. So you have two options here for sine and, and cosine. Now, to create an up and down motion, I'm going to just go ahead and delete this expression. And instead of the rotation property for this layer, I'm going to type in P for the position property. For an up and down motion, remember the oscillation that we want. So, um, up and down, we don't want it to move left and right, so we want that first value to be zero. The second value, we want to change, and then we can use the math properties here. So, I'm just going to go in option click or I'll click on the stopwatch. So the first thing we're going to do here is in brackets, we're going to type in value bracket zero. So that will be my X value followed by a comma. We have to separate the values value one. That's my Y value. Notice that we have a set another bracket there. So then we add that to an equation like this math dot sign time times 10 times 100 okay so we've seen math.sign.time before now we're just multiplying this by 10 then we're t multiplying the whole equation by 100 so what this does is gives us this up and down motion so you can see what's happening with the oscillation and it's pretty smooth animation just goes up and down like this and that's going to just go on forever. And that's the nice thing about using expressions. You just don't have to think about um, uh, keyframes and you don't have to add the keyframes. Now, if we wanted to create a left and right motion instead of up and down, so our, our expression is going to look a little different. And here I'm going to be using some, some variables. We're going to just type in the values, but um, instead of typing the values, we can just use some variables here. So I'm going to say a equals time times 10. So think of that earlier expression we used times 10 before. So b equals math dot sign a times 100. So what this is doing is it's taking time times 10 and it's putting in here and multiplied by 100, which is we, we saw in the previous expression too. So then finally, I'm going to use position. And position is another variable. We're just, we're giving it a name plus B and then position and that's one. So that's the X, this is the X value. So on the X value, it's gonna go left and right and on the Y value, it's not going to move too much. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So you can see it's kind of swinging back and forth here. So it's left and right motion. And we don't have the Y value changing. Position 1 is just going to stay the same. Um, so, and then to create circular motion, uh, what we'd have to do for position is um, do uh, additional things. Um, and for position, it's again, it's going to be X and Y, right? But um, this time, we're going to use sine and cosine together for this. So the first variable is going to be A equals time times 10. So we've seen that before. B equals math dot sign a times 100 so it's just pulling in the first variable which is a times time 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 10 and it's pulling that in and then c equals math dot cosine and that's going to be a again times 100 and then we put it all together. So again, using position, we say zero, and this is the X value, plus 
plus C, and then position 1 plus B. And let's see what this does. So this gives us this circular motion, and it's just constantly rotating like that. And we're not even using the rotation property here, we're using the position property to do this. Uh, next, we'll take a look at a scale effect. So this will be scaling up and down. And this one is pretty complex. So I'm going to delete this expression. We're going to go to the scale property here. Option, click on scale. And so a couple of things we need to set this up first is, so there's going to be a frequency value of 3, an amplitude value of 35, and then a decay, decay, think of like slowing it down. And then S equals amp times math dot sign. And then we're going to take that frequency value times time times 2 times math dot pi divided by math dot exponent another math value there in decay times time and then finally the scale value and the scale value accepts two things um, X and Y so s and s so we're we're doing this on both the X and the Y and I don't have any errors in my expression so this produces this kind of bouncing effect and it's it's really really fluid the motion is amazing and it, the decay is what sets it off so the decay is what's slowing this down so if i make the decay a lot slower let's say it's 0 0.2 for example and i play play through this so now it's bouncing a lot more and it's taking a lot longer to slow down and if I change the decay value to a higher value, let's say it's 1.5, let's say, this should slow down pretty quickly. So we're getting the bounce, and then you can see that it's, it falls off really, really fast. right? So likewise, um, if this frequency was 6, let's bring this back to 1.0 and see what that does. So if the frequency is a higher value, what happens? So the bounce happens a lot faster. So the lower this value, uh, the less it bounces. So let's, let's say make it 2. Right, so it just bounces a lot slower. And then for the amplitude, if I take this number and uh, make it double, so let's say 70, what would that do? So we get more of the scale effect going back and forth there. Okay, so that's that's a scale effect. And that is uh, using the math properties uh, in expressions in After Effects. So you can play around with those. Um, again, I have a reference doc that you can uh, use to grab these and try them out.